All right. And uh, why don't we get more info about why you make certain balance changes? AGS just makes random explosive changes but misses to underline it with reasoning and goals for us to comprehend. The truth is we have a 20-sided dice we keep at the back. I thought it was the blind monkeys typing. <laughs> it's a dartboard. <laughs> yes, it's a dartboard. Hey everybody, welcome to Forge in Eternum where we talk about all things New World. And I hope you all had a great holiday weekend wherever you are. Uh, today we're doing the November Q&A. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Lovin and we are going to get started immediately. Can you tell us why Season 4 has less content? What is new to the game as many of the features on the roadmap are either not happening or later in that season? Yeah, well, I, I tried to address this in the uh, game dev up, or the development update. Um, we just can't, we're coming off of a huge release, the, the return of uh, the rise of the Angry Earth um, expansion. And we had a few quality mishaps there. So we wanted to make sure that going forward, that doesn't happen again. We want to focus on high quality deliverables. And so because of that, we decided to hold a few things back. Uh, on top of that, you know, when we talked about cross world expeditions, which was planned for season four, we really wanted to lean into it and go for a full pug finder because we think that would be a much better experience for players. And that's going to cost us a little more time as well. So we're hearing people say they'd rather us go a little slower and deliver at a higher quality. And we're going to do that. Uh, in earnest going forward. All right, um, new loot system. is great that we can drop something that we were already wearing using, but why are all these staff still dropped with totally random perks? I got INT gloves with STR weapons perk. This is a situation where after 35 expeditions, I can't get any single item that I'm able to use. Do you see the problem or it's intended? Uh, so this question is about loot biasing. So the way loot biasing works is that some percentage of your drops will be loot biased. It's important to realize not all of them are also, right? So sometimes they're not. And that's good because it'll allow you to get loot in different uh, gear sets that you're trying to get. What loot biasing does is it makes sure that the attributes and the weapon are aligned. Uh, and we've also removed some of the uninteresting perks from those loot biasing perks. But we don't currently bias weapon perks. So those can sometimes be a mismatch. And I think you know, that's partially intentional because I think we want those perks to be very special and something that may be more oriented towards crafting or you have to get a special named item. Uh, so uh, that's the way it currently works and no, no immediate plans to change that. All right, um, many gamers leaving again because of the missing grind. Instead of ward, we have now enchanted ward and health. Every second player is using a fire staff and there is no reason to craft anymore once you have your two to three sets. I bought every season pass, many skins, emotes, and the DLC. Why should I continue to play? Well, first, thank you for your deep commitment, playing the game so much, buying all that stuff. Like, like we appreciate it, and we try to make the game as good as possible. I think we've learned in the past that having too much grind is a bad thing. And so we've, we've pulled back on that and tried to make it more fun and to make the chases more interesting that can change gameplay with things like artifacts. Once you get through that, there are still a lot of other things you can do. There's, uh, I, mean, I still find chest runs fun. I know that's a little goofy. Uh, I mean, you can play music instruments. There's fishing all, and all the other trade skills. There's working on your house. There's changing your character through transmog. I think there's multiple vectors of the end game depending on what type of player you are. And we had to try to bias toward the broader group as far as the gear chase and the grind. So uh, like, we totally appreciate you playing and I'm sorry if the change is like, took away like some of that end game grind for you, but hopefully you can find some fun in other areas. And I've been enjoying, like for me, it's been an opportunity to try out more builds, right? Because it is a little bit easier. It's like, hey, let me try out some different things, uh, which has been really fun. And artifacts play well into that, right? Like every time I get an artifact, I'm like, all right, I want to create a build around this. What can I do? And I think that's fun. Yeah, and, and also like uh, the, the outpost Russian arenas, they change every time. Like no matter how you play, I still find it fun. It's challenging. It's the, you know, the, the people, yep. playing against people is a little different. When will Dark Ascent be fixed? Uh, that will be fixed in the next upcoming minor. Okay, cool. Very, uh, <laughs> very soon. Stop putting prismatic drops in aptitude boxes. This is breaking the farm market. The market will collapse in one month. Uh, I, 
I love the, uh, the great omniscience here. Uh, I do believe, you know, and we're going to talk about this more, there are some issues with the economy. I don't believe like the prismatic items right now are, are holding their value pretty well. We definitely saw a decrease over time, which is normal, right? Like they come out white hot, especially because they're all cool down based. Uh, and they've come down, but we've seen the prices sell them. I think they're, they're at a healthy-ish level right now. So we're not seeing anything right now. We will keep our eye on this, obviously. Uh, if they did start to decrease again, we would look at it. Uh, I think the aptitude boxes are a place we would look. Uh, also, we have some of the nodes uh, a little higher, so there's some things we could tweak, but no immediate plans. Are you sure the way you balance perks makes your community happy? For example, Shirking Heels was broken at the start because of the interaction with the Ankh. Has been fixed and balanced. With the last update, it has been nerfed again, but now that it has tens of CDs, it's a completely useless perk, and anyone who has it in their gear should simply throw it away and start over again. Uh, so let me just step back here, because this is a great question, and I think we are happy about some things and unhappy about others. I think uh, what I am really happy about is that the pace of change, like how often we put up balance updates, has increased dramatically uh, previous to last year. If you remember, we were admittedly a little slow and that was a goal of ours. Let's make balance changes more often. And I think, I think we've hit that and I'm very happy with that. I think the magnitude of our change here recently might have been a little bit too strong. Uh, I think, especially with balance, like I like making big uh, meta shifting changes with expansions or when we do a big perk rework. But outside of that, I think we need to be making a little more uh, constrained changes and sort of pushing our way towards balance. Uh, so here I think, you know, with the Shirking Heels, I do think we overshot a little bit uh, with the 10 seconds. Uh, we'll go into details a little bit in, in uh, Balance of Power on why we did that, uh, but that is something that we're looking at and, and we are going to be pulling back a little bit on that change. You know, I'd add that in the past, if you go back a year or earlier, th there was a lot of feedback that we weren't making enough change fast enough. We were nudging forward, nudging, nudging, and Sometimes you have to go too far and then pull back. And I think this is an example where we probably did that, but a lot of the other times it's worked out and this yeah. one, you know, it's correctable. Yeah. What are you going to do about the gold sink? People are quitting. Uh, economy, it's a hard topic. Right now I can observe the situation that in many different cases we are not able to earn money. Loot from the dungeon is 99% bonded, unable to sell it. And crafting. Product is cheaper than all the mats needed to craft it. Gold sinks drain wallets mostly from casual players. Will you be able to justify the crafting gold sink? It costs 55,000 gold per week on chromatic orbs and Azoth inductor with little ways of balancing this out. Could this be added to mutations? Have you tried to fix resource prices? It's getting worse now and seems out of balance. For example, the prices of runewood and spin fiber are very cheap now. How do you fix it? Yes, the chromatic seals and the azoth inductors are a big uh, gold sink right now. Uh, and generally, that's more of an opt-in situation. So the more time-rich players are that have a lot of stockpiled gold and things like that uh, are spending on that. Um, and because it's a, a time-based thing, um, it's something that more casual players that accumulate some wealth can also participate in and not feel like they're falling far behind. That does slow down the rate of... Uh, how much is being crafted in the economy, and that goes to the, uh, the prices of the resources that you mentioned that were crashing. Um, in the winter uh, update, we're going to have additional sources for the chromatic seals and the azoth inductor. Um, so that should actually increase the rate of higher end items being crafted uh, and bring those prices back up, we think. Yeah. And it's important to note, those are additional ways to get these, right? So yeah. we'll, we'll still have the faction store, but there are additional ways, and there are ways that won't have coin sinks in them. So it'll right. be a way to get these that even casuals, super casuals, uh, can get very easily. Yes, and, and that's a really good point because uh, one of our main goals in the economy is to prevent like a huge wealth gap between time-rich players and more casual players, right? And so from the data that, that we've been looking at, um, the uh, what we call the, the Genie Index, right? Which uh, there was a deep dive video with the economy team, so you can go look at that up uh, to get more information on that. But the, the ratio between how much wealth more casual players and uh, like very hardcore players have um, has shrunk with, with this change. And so that, that was something that we wanted to do, and uh, you know, it, it's meeting our expectations right now in terms of the economy. 
Will there be option added for Magnify that we can lock the attributes we added, so eating food will not change whole set? Also, when Amplify going to be added to the game? Uh, so we've talked about Magnify in the past. Uh, our stance on this is still the same. No immediate changes planning planned. Uh, we sort of like how it works in that I think, I think it works well with like two to three pieces of Magnify. Once you start getting more, it, it can make some, some swaps difficult. Uh, but for a single build, I think it's very casual friendly. Uh, and if you go a ton of Magnify, it can create issues. But I think that's part of the, the pros and cons of this, right? The balance is like, hey, I can easily get a Magnify thing, but then it may become a little more challenging. Or I can get a custom uh, drop or craft something, and then it works better with my build. So that is working. I will say we are still looking at it. You know, we may make some changes, but nothing really planned in the near term here. Companies can now own five, six, seven territories and defend them easily. I haven't been in a war since the first four months of the game. Why is this content so gated and so one-sided that a single company can own everything? Well, it was a decision we made early, uh, and I agree they can, but when you look at the data, it's pretty rare actually to see a company own more than three. However, all that said, I still agree with it, and it's something we're talking about pretty heavily internally, doing a review on and maybe making some adjustments. And I think there are some minor uh, scheduling adjustments coming out in season four that will make this a touch harder because there'll be more overlapping wars. So. Touch harder to own multiple. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but that's not, you know, that's one step. We'll see what the impact of that yeah. is. And, and I agree with Scott. We'll continue looking at this. If you're going to gatekeep us from getting 700 gear score gear in PvP, why not allow us to obtain it through PvP progression or ranking system? Top 50% in arena access to 690, top 25% 700 gear score, top 5 to 10% PvP exclusive mounts, titles, skins, anything? Uh, so I'm gonna address the first part of this question because I think that's the bigger one. Uh, should we be gatekeeping if are we going to be continuing to gatekeep and the answer there is no like that was not our intent was that we didn't want like only the good gear comes from pve and not from pvp uh, so we are making a number of changes in season four to address this i think uh, the first one is uh, pvp weapon upgrading will be returned on and be working now right so you can get when you get a cool champion piece of gear you can now turn it to 700 gear score uh, upgrading it like you can other named items that's going to be huge uh, so that'll be one source. The second thing is we are improving the caches that come out of OPR. And, uh, you know, we all play OPR. I know the community loves it. Uh, so the quality of that loot will be better. Uh, it'll be more loot biased. It can roll higher. Uh, so I think that will also help. So, uh, and this is one step. We'll continue to look at it. We, you know, philosophically, we agree that we want PVP to be a way you can gear yourself out. Uh, that is our goal, and we're going to continue to push towards that. I'd like to see the freezing at login issue addressed. I have to end task and restart the game usually at least three to five times before it will launch properly. What usually happens, launch game, it gets to the swirling colors animation and that is so lagged in like three frames per second. It eventually gets to a solid white screen and just freezes up. Sometimes that first animation will work, then at the AGS smile logo, it slows down and freezes up again. Yeah, so I think uh, that one is, we have that fixed internally, and so the, that fix should be going out to players uh, either in the next minor or the next major patch. Uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but coming soon. Is the health perk adamant going to get easier to get? It is. Uh, right now there is the one way you can get it through an aptitude chest, and we're looking at giving other venues for delivery. Yeah, in season four, it will now be a part of the general loot table in some areas, so it'll become uh, much easier. Okay. The new dungeon, Glacial Tarn, is quite good, but feels a bit empty. Are you planning to add more trash mobs to fill it out a bit more? Uh, thanks, yeah, we, we are liking the dungeon. I think it played well in PTR. Uh, it's, it's super fun. I like the dichotomy of it and uh, Forge a lot. Uh, we also agree with your feedback, and I think we heard it from a number of people in the PTR, that there were some dead areas in the expedition. Uh, and the expedition team is taking that feedback to heart, and we found at least two other areas where we're sort of creating a, a pack of trash. So we are adding some, uh, and I think this will be sufficient, and we'll see how it plays. It's the first time I've ever heard a community asking for more trash mobs. <laughs> <laughs> it, it can be fun and, as you're plowing through. Uh, 
any plans to ban exploiters permanently. It's so frustrating trying to play PvP with people who abuse bugs and exploits like the rapier one. Or even worse, cheating. And what about bots and gold sellers? Two years of game and still the same. So um, we have made a lot of progress in terms of our capability to detect and action uh, players for gold selling, uh, you know, chat violations, uh, botting, uh, and exploits. Um, so we do permanently ban some exploiters. Uh, generally, our threshold there is, is relatively high, I would say. Like, we don't want to ban people that, that don't really deserve it or made a mistake or something. But, you know, repeated abuse of an exploit where, you know, AGS has announced, like, hey, we know this is happening, don't do this, or, you know, we've, we've disabled some functionality or something because it's gotten too rampant. Like, we've, we've definitely acted on that. Um, as far as, like, bots and, like, RMT stuff, uh, we are, you know, every month we have uh, ban waves going out. We have um, EAC, uh, like, banned software detection, and we do hardware ID bans uh, based on that. Um, and then we, uh, you know, there's a lot of reporting going on, which is good. Like, you know, if you see someone doing something in the game that's an exploit or, or you know, toxic behavior, definitely report them. Um, but we've also started to see some uh, people doing uh, reporting as a service, like kind of like to uh, like harass people essentially. And so that's something we're also detecting and uh, banning, uh, you know, if you're participating in that, that sort of behavior. Um, so, you know, it's just, it's a lot to investigate. Like our, our CS team is, is super busy and our security team is super busy, but we're, we're always making improvements there. Yeah, I think, you know, not quite fair to say it's the same thing as it's been. I think our CS team, our engineering team, our security team have put in a huge effort over the, since launch to improve on this. And I know that if you see or you run into an occurrence, it's a problem and it's no fun, but um, we really take it serious and it's a big deal to us. There's been, there's been a lot of work by everyone to help with this stuff. Would you please give an in-depth explanation of luck in New World? Oh, please. Yeah. How long do you have? <laughs> <laughs> so super high level, uh, there's two types of luck, right? There's gathering luck and then there's global luck. And the gathering luck is specific to like, you know, chopping down trees, mining, like the, the trade skills. Um, and that increases your chance of getting like the rare special items along with whatever the base resources you were, you were trying to harvest. Um, <clears throat> the global luck though uh, is sort of applied to, uh, you know, chest, uh, chests that you open in the world, not OPR or uh, um, portal okay. uh, chests. Uh, those, those are not affected by luck. But, uh, you know, like ECR chests, uh, loot drops from enemies and named enemies, um, and th those kinds of things. And so the way the luck works is the luck bonus from the, uh, the perk on your items, like those stack up, so 2%, 2%, 2% gives you 6% uh, luck bonus. And that's just added to the roll that you make on a loot table or something. And so generally the way our, our loot tables are structured is you're gonna have a, with more luck, you're gonna have a chance to roll higher, which will unlock some things to now be droppable in some cases. Not all loot tables are set up that way, but, um, but it doesn't change uh, how the, the gear score uh, that drops or the perks or anything like that. It's really just like whether something drops or not. Um, and the, the things that are most affected by that would be like recipes and schematics, um, named weapons, for example. Uh, and in named weapons, like if a, if a named enemy can drop a bunch of different named weapons, like it increases the chance of you getting a named weapon, not a particular one. Um, so yeah, that's sort of in a nutshell how, how all that works. Okay, so let me ask. Is it like, I'm trying to conceptualize this for people. So basically you have like a general loot bucket. Mm -hmm. And if I roll a certain number, I open up a better loot bucket. It, think of it as like, a, like a, a line, right? And so normally you can only roll in this range. And now when you add, loot, uh, add luck, it increases both your floor and your ceiling. So now things that are higher up on that line are now you have a chance to roll on. And it sort of like pushes up the bottom. So we, we have different types of loot tables. We have what we call and and or tables. So an and table is the higher your roll, you get everything 
you know, a chance at everything. And an or one is like you only get one thing, but now you can roll the better stuff on this end. And so the increasing the floor makes it less like you're gonna get like common or, or like not how, great How stuff. high does the ceiling go? <clears throat> All the way. To what? <laughs> to what? <laughs> uh, generally rolls are out of like 10,000. And so like a, uh, like a luck perk of like 1% is like a bonus of 100 on your roll. Um, and so uh, I think it, it really depends on how the particular table is set up and what rarity we want an item to be. Um, and for some special things, we have uh, like pity tickers, right? Like for example, for the rabbit's revenge, we have like the chest and the mask. And you know, after I think it's like 200 and 400 kills or something like that, like you're guaranteed to get it. But for the vast majority of things, like just having more luck is going to make it more likely that you'll get it at some point. But all the rolls are still totally independent for the most part. All right. So are there plans to address teleporting during races? It could be particularly frustrating when your faction has lower numbers and you are unable to assist by sending additional people to the point. Um, yeah, so right now we don't have any plans to change the teleport mechanics. Uh, right now, you know, it's a server stability issue. Like, combat is a very expensive operation and so like, we can only have so many people in an area before it starts degrading the experience for everyone else. So we, we kind of have to have some limiting factor that, that gets players out of that very dense uh, block of activity. Um, I do want to address the question, though, uh, because there should not be a situation where um, the, the, that two of the factions don't have as many players in that fight as they can get. So we have a per faction limit, and then we have a total PvP flag player limit. Um, and what that means is that you know, we wanted, because of the server scale issues I just mentioned, we wanted to give a little bit more wiggle room for, uh, you know, two factions that were like really like going after it to, to have more players there. So the, the per faction limits are actually a little bit higher than what they would add up to for the, the total player limit. Um, and so uh, unless you're the third faction and you're kind of underrepresented and both other factions are both very heavily represented there, you should not be in a situation where your faction can't get more people into that particular tower. And the towers are all independently uh, limited. All right. And uh, why don't we get more info about why you make certain balance changes? AGS just makes random explosive changes but misses to underline it with reasoning and goals for us to comprehend. The truth is we have a 20-sided dice we keep in the back. I thought it was the blind monkeys typing. <laughs> it's a dartboard. <laughs> yes, it's a dartboard. No, uh, like, one of, like I, I'm sorry you feel that way, and it, it, it kind of makes us sad because like, one of the big reasons for this show is to talk about the why that you know, Scott just went into some of and Dave does. On top of that, Dave runs another show that you may not be aware of called Balance of Power every Wednesday that talks about the balance changes and the, and the reasoning behind it. Not every Wednesday. Just uh, the Wednesday following the Q&A update. Sorry, Mr. Lane. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Levin. I appreciate that correction on the spot. Um, some Wednesdays, Dave has the balance of power update, and those are you know, another way to communicate with the players. So we'll take the feedback and we'll try to get better at it. Um, it is something we, we've actively been working on, though. I, want, I just want to be clear so you, so you understand that. And it's important that we explain the why behind stuff. Um, so yeah, so we're trying, and I guess we'll have to try harder. Okay, uh, that is all I got. All right, everybody. Well, that's, uh, that's all we're going to answer today. Thank you for the questions. Um, we really appreciated the new format where we gave some parameters around the questions. We'd love to hear how you felt about it, if this felt a little more targeted towards stuff that you know, answered the questions you wanted us to answer. Uh, so let us know that on you know, however you talk to us, Reddit, X, Discord, all those great places. Uh, I want to wish everyone a great holiday season in case we don't see you. I want to thank uh, Dave and Scott for coming in and fielding questions with us. And if you like what you saw, let us know. Follow, like, subscribe, and all those fun things. Otherwise, see, see you in a turn. Bye-bye. Uh, today we're going to talk about what balance is like in coming up into season four and with the recent release. Yay.